So in just three days, protesters are going to gather again outside of the U.S. Capitol building, all in support of the people who attacked the building in January during the insurrection. Security, of course, is on high alert. Workers will begin installing a fence tonight around the perimeter. Capitol Police have asked the Pentagon to have National Guard troops ready to go in case they're needed. Everyone, of course, hoping to avoid another invasion of our nation's hallmark and symbol of democracy. Now, to dig a little deeper on this weekend's rally and the psychology surrounding domestic extremism, I've asked psychiatrist Dr. Zeev Cohen to join us. He's an expert on extremism, violent behavior, and conspiracy thinking at Cornell. So, Dr. Cohen, thanks for coming on with us. You know, it's been almost a year now since the 2020 election, 252 days since the insurrection on the 6th of January, but we're still seeing and hearing these conspiracies about election fraud. Why do you think that is? And, and, and have you seen this growth in extreme thinking over the years? Definitely. You know, I think it's relevant that we're at the anniversary of 9-11. I would say that as a forensic psychiatrist, you know, since 9-11, there's been a steady uh, growth in conspiracy theories and just ordinary folks believing in them. Uh, it started with Loose Change, that conspiracy theory movie about 9-11, and it's just gone on to Pizzagate, QAnon, um, a stolen election. So we're seeing more and more of this, and it really seems to be fueled by social media. People spread these things over social media, and they instantly believe what their friends share with them. Uh, so this has really taken on a life of its own, and it's dominating people's thinking. You know, what we're going to see this weekend is basically the insurrectionist conference. They're going to be out from their homes, out from behind their keyboards, where they are able to see face to face people with like minded views. They've said that their plan is not for there to be any violence. They also said that about January 6th prior to and then we saw police officers beaten with flagpoles and American flags. Do, do you think there's the potential for, for violence here and, and how would we know in advance if extremist thought would transition into some sort of violent action. Absolutely, there's potential for violence here. So it is really a little bit like January 6, 2.0. The reason I say that is it's a it's a conference or it's a gathering that's fueled by conspiracy theory. And the theory is that the election was stolen. And the people who are gathering have said publicly that they believe authority to be illegitimate that you know for example any restrictions placed on their rally would be illegitimate because they have the right to be there um, and to voice their opinion and so I, I think that that kind of black and white thinking and looking at it us versus them is really a hallmark of extremist thinking yeah. and as we saw on january 6 it can lead to violence I want to discuss this from another vantage point here for just a second. We talked with Officer Harry Dunn, one of the Capitol Police officers who defended the Capitol on January 6th. He's going to be working this Saturday, and we asked him how he was feeling about the upcoming rally. Listen to what he said. Do you think the Capitol Police is ready for Saturday, this Justice for J6 rally? You know, um, we have new leadership in place to include a new chief, um, new sergeant at arms, um, who assist with the security of this complex. And um, I'm encouraged that the people in charge are gonna put us in the best position to be successful. Do you have any fear about what could happen on Saturday? Yeah, you, did you see what happened January 6th? Of course, but um, not enough to deter me to show up and do my job though, so. So listen, you specialize in PTSD. I can only imagine the amount of anxiety a lot of these officers might feeling leading into the weekend. You know, what what effects might they suffer from this and how could this this trigger them to be out there again? So, the, you know, the symptoms of PTSD are um, intrusive memories of the trauma, um, emotional numbing, depression, anxiety, panic attacks. It can lead to substance abuse. So it can really be a very crippling condition. And certainly anything that reminds you of the trauma is gonna raise your PTSD symptoms. It's gonna put you on hyper alert, what we call hypervigilance. And for some people that may even be too much. And we've seen that there was a spate of suicides amongst Capitol Police officers. So I think that we have to be very concerned about how this is gonna affect the force. And we're, those individuals are really gonna need uh, a lot of uh, mental health expertise in the department upfront trying to help them before things get out of hand emotionally. 
Yeah, they have to know that they have a ton of support. We are all, of course, hoping that what plays out here this weekend is just a tame First Amendment approved rally without violence. We appreciate your perspective on this. Dr. Zeev Cohen from Cornell, thank you so much for coming on with us. Good to be here.